And first, I want to make very clear, the German pronunciation is Julian, and if you cannot do it, don't care. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yes, it's, uh, a, it's an exciting day um, to have Julian here today and have seen him on the pitch. Um, I know we are not always making it easy for you because we always say, hey, stay patient. We want to sign the right one, not the first one. We want to add the pieces that we think this team needs to become a winning team in this league slowly and carefully and right. So um, then you always ask which position you want to improve and we don't want to speak about that because being respectful to our players that are also doing a good job. So actually the right wing back position was a position of where we thought we can upgrade and uh, it wasn't very difficult to identify who's the best wing back player in this league. So it was only to get to the point that we can find an agreement on that or not and to move forward and uh, DC let the door open when we uh, con contacted them the first time. And from then it was hanging in and seeing uh, where we can go. And then finally last week the door opened completely and so we took the chance and um, got the guy that is the best wing back in this league. So we are very happy and I hope he enjoyed the wonderful weather in British Columbia that is always like that, 12 months in the year. And, uh, and uh, we will see him on the pitch very soon and uh, then one other piece uh, finally is done and we can focus on the next one. Yeah, thank you. Well, pretty simple. You know, you guys, I, I've always said that, uh, uh, you know, I am the coach of the team and uh, anyone who's coming to the training facility, I'm, ha I'm happy to coach them. But in this case, I'm really, really happy when uh, Axel and told me that the possibility to to sign to sign Julian, it was, uh, I, I was really looking forward to it because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a good play. I think he fits perfectly on the system that uh, that we're using here is a dynamic player is an aggressive player he wins uh, 1v1 battle and uh, so and the the added thing to me it's also that he's a natural wing back so that's the main position why we signed him for but in his career he played uh, as a number eight uh, especially in Atlanta when they were playing 3-5-2 he played even winger or even number 10 sometimes in uh, in uh, in dc so you know guys how i like to tinker with the formation how i like to uh, explore the uh, player in different position and when you have player that can play also they have a natural position but they can play also in in additional spots it's always uh, it's always important for the balance of the team and it's important for uh, to give solution to the team and being unpredictable. So that's one of the things that we want to do. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we, we follow with him in, during the, his five, six, leagues, the six years that he played in the league. And uh, the, I think the, the best characteristic is that he's a quality player, but he's also an hardworking player. And, the, and those things in this team uh, go together because the team comes, uh, uh, first uh, of everyone, and only if you work well for the team, you're gonna, I would say, shine as an individual. So uh, I hope and I think that uh, he will be a big piece on the, for the team in order for him also to 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 shine again and being and being one of the very important player in this league. So I'm gonna th I'm gonna teach you also a little bit of Italian. Benvenuto, Julian, <laughs> e andiamo. <laughs> Well, thank you um, to Axel and, and Vanny for, for the kind words. And um, yeah, just thinking of me that way, I guess, and, and believing in me and, and, and trusting me to, to come in here and, and make an impact. Um, I'm excited, you know, to be um, at a club that really values me in that way and, and that really wants me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just happy to be here. You know, I'm, you know, the trade is done with now and, and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to to what's what's to come and, and how I can make an yeah an impact in this team with with the few games left in the season, um, you know obviously a big big uh, Canadian Cup final coming up and um, playing for for a trophy is always fun so I'm looking forward to that and then hopefully getting into the playoffs, um, 
and uh, yeah, I'm just focused on that. I'm again, I'm I'm excited to be here, um, and 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 yeah, really really appreciate um, this club believing in me and um, looking forward to to contributing and and and, and staying you know uh, a, a good a good player in this league and being a really good good yeah good player for this club uh, moving forward. Excellent. Thank you. Questions? Actually, you don't acquire a player like this if he's not a significant piece of, of, of this franchise. Do we call him a significant piece? And you mentioned the fact that he's somebody you had your eye on for a while. He's got a year left. I would assume you're going to pick up that option. And, and it might be a little bit too soon to talk about the future, but he seems to be somebody that I think you'd like to have on the roster for a while. Yes, of course. Um, if we, we always said we want to build this franchise step by step in a sustainable way. and. Uh, to do that is also not to plan to give the players away very soon if you if you get the, the main pieces together. Um, but we have done our background checks. We have we have spoken with so many people. He's an important piece for us as a club on the pitch and also off the pitch. I know that he has done a lot of amazing work uh, on the social impact side. And our club is, uh, is one of the leaders in that in MLS. And uh, we have a huge department. The MLS Pride game is coming up. And you know what that means for us and how we do this stuff. So um, he should become a face of this franchise. He will be an important piece on and off the pitch. And uh, I, uh, as soon as we have convinced him how nice British Columbia is, I think we can speak about a five-year deal. <laughs> Julian, um, we chatted earlier. You mentioned the fact that four months ago you decided to be I'm vegan. I'm fascinated by it because I told my coworkers, he's like, wow, I said, I could never give up meat. That's what he said, anyways. But your decision to go into this, you told me earlier that you feel so so much better. Talk to me about the decision and how about Yeah, I mean, I've, I've become a vegan um, because I think ethically. I think it's simply because I don't think I need to. I need to have an animal that dies so I can have my sandwich or I can have my steak. Um, you know, I think that, that that was the first thing. The second option was climate change. I think it has a huge impact on climate change and burning down the forest to, you know, the, the rainforest in Brazil, for example, to um, just plant food for all the animals that we eat. You know, I think on that those types of reasons were number one and then number two and, and three and, you know, all they are. There's so many reasons because the more research I did, and I did a lot, because I didn't want to put my body at risk, you know, obviously it's my job, like my body is my job. Um, so I didn't want to com jump into this out of the blue. And um, the more research I did, the more I found out that this can be really beneficial for me in terms of healthy, in terms of recovery, in terms of longevity of my career, uh, not just my career, my whole life. Um, so that was kind of, yeah, those were the reasons why I started it. And on top of that, now being into it, you know, three, four months, I feel great. You know, I don't have any deficiencies. I, you know, I'm not sick more, I'm not, you know, none of that. Like, I'm not injured. It's, it's really like, it's just been, been really good. And yeah, I'm excited to continue it. Love you for taking that stand. Um, let's talk about the soccer side of things. We know that you can score goals, but you really show your worth when you set up everybody else. Is that where you take your greatest pride in, in, in your game or? or how would you characterize what you do best? Um, I mean, I'd rather have two assists than one goal, um, because that means we scored twice, you know, as a team. Um, that's me, the team player, you know, a guy that I don't look at the stat sheet. I don't look at, oh, man, I have to take this penalty. I want to take this corner so maybe I can get an assist. No, none of that. I think um, I'm, a, I'm a team guy first that um, wants to win, you know, over, above else. And um, if that means my role is, you know, to assist uh, more and, and not be scoring myself, then that's fine. You know, if my role is to maybe play a bit more defensive even and let other guys be more creative going forward, then that's that role, you know. And, and that's obviously Vanny's job to decide in order what kind of role he wants to put me in. And um, again, I'm, I'm here to, to win, win soccer games, uh, win trophies. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of been me throughout my whole career. And the team always comes first, and, and that's, that's who I am. Yeah, so I only made it through about the f the first half of that Portland game. I was I was really tired because um, it was pretty late on the East Coast still. Um, 
but uh, no, I thought I thought the team played good. You know, I, you know, I thought they had a great game plan going in, and obviously scored a really good goal. Um, go up one zero. I was a little bit um, uh, disappointed that you know at the end you kind of concede the goal. When I woke up, I, I saw the one one, and it would have been nice to get the three. But I think it's a great point on the road. Um, you can see the the team spirit and you know how how Vaney is on the sidelines and you know how that translates onto the field and and all that type of stuff and and you can see that it was a team that you know was on the same page um, in terms of togetherness in terms of unity and in terms of kind of what the plan is for that specific game and and that's very good to see because it's easy to get come into a team like that I think and and for me to be able to adjust to. Um, to that style of play and to whatever the game plan will be on Saturday or then the following game or whatever. Um, so it will be, um, yeah, it was a good first impression. Um, also, you know, obviously it was good today to get out, get some touches, talk to the guys and, and laugh a little bit with them and, and get to work a bit more, uh, obviously, in the coming days. But um, certainly off to, to a good start and, and an encouraging one. And I'm, I'm excited to, again, play more of a, more of a role. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so I've obviously known him throughout the league, throughout the years a little bit, as he was in San Jose and now here. And I don't, didn't get to play to him too much um, because Eastern and Western Conference. But uh, yeah, he, he came in, you know, sat next to me at, at breakfast, and you know, we had some good conversations about just when I got in and when my family's coming, all that type of stuff. And it's just easy to, you know, I, I spoke to, to Jake Nowinski as well over the weekend. Um, via text a little bit, so it's easy to have kind of those early connections to start with to kind of have a couple go-to guys that you can kind of, hey, when are we doing this, what are we doing here, um, before you really get comfortable with everything. And so, you know, those two guys I would probably take out and, and, or, and just say that, you know, they've been, they've been great so far. Okay, we're going to throw it over to Bruce, then we'll go online for a question from Tom Bogart via Sarita, then we'll go to Joshua. Bruce. Uh, any time in a career, you know, any time, any changes, there's ob obviously adjustments uh, you have to, uh, you go through and things like, the, things like that. And um, having played in the Eastern Conference for the majority of your career, uh, what adjustments have you had to make uh, with you, your family, um, coming west? Well, so far, none really, because uh, you know this was uh, this happened four days ago, Friday. So um, there will be a lot of adjustments, I think, going forward. Um, but I think my wife has been super supportive. I can't be more thankful to have her by my side and and be open to all of this um, because it happened quickly and everything. Um, so it'll be it'll be exciting for our family. You know, we have a 20-month-old daughter that. Um, my wife, they're coming in a couple of weeks already. We want to get them out here so get so they can get to know the city. Um, and then we make a decision on where we want to live long term, um, those types of things. And um, again, it, it'll be it'll be a lot harder if she wasn't she wasn't so supportive. Um, and in the in terms of soccer, I think it's almost like a new league. Yeah, you know, you play some Western Conference teams here and there, but uh, I'm excited for it. You know, I think I've, from what I've spoken to old teammates from Atlanta that are now retired, that have played in the West, they're like, the West is awesome. The West is a ton of fun. So um, I'm excited to get to know, you know, new, new cities, new stadiums on a regular basis um, and, and be, part of, be part of the Western Conference. All right, Sarita. Uh, this is online from Tom Bogart. Um, Axel, can you walk us through when you knew it was possible to get the steel done and the process behind it? Tell Tom to fly out here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a legendary Tom Bogart. Um, what is the question? When we when found out? <laughs> <laughs> when you knew this uh, deal was going to get done, the process of how you knew it was going to happen and how you got to this point? Uh, there is not a lot I, I want to share and can share because uh, I was part of conversations with another club and I'm not feeling comfortable to speak about inter con internal conversations with another club. Um, we knew, and he was our number one, two, three. Uh, play on the list for this position and uh, so we gave it a try at that point they left the door a little bit open it was back and forth it was a no yet not yet maybe in two weeks so it took a little bit of a time and we 
we hang in and wait it because, uh, as I said, we don't want to sign just somebody to have somebody for a position and we don't want to sign somebody if we have the feeling we can get somebody better. And um, so when the door completely opened, um, we, we found a solution. Yeah, just that I'm, I'm excited to be here and, and I'm excited to be part of this community. You know, I'm excited to, to get to know them, to be, play at BC Place, um, to obviously show what I can do on the field. Um, but also, like Axel said earlier, you know, about me being a part of the community and, and being able to, to connect with fans, being able to make an impact. I've done that in Atlanta. Um, I've done that in D.C. Um, and and I'm, I'm planning to do it here. You know, my wife is big on this. I'm big on this. And... And we're, we're regular people, you know, when, I, when I'm when, all the time. So uh, we want to connect um, with the community. We want to be part of this, this city um, and, and make an impact to help better lives and, and help, um, yeah, use my platform um, that I've been given, um, that I'm thankful for, um, that I've been given. And, and that aspect, um, for sure, we want to we wanna make an impact as well. But again, I think that all starts with winning games, and it makes it a lot easier to do community work if we, if we win games or in the playoffs or you know everybody, the whole city is excited about this club, and 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 that's what it starts with. So I'm here to do that first, and then you know try and try and make an impact off the field as well. What was your reaction when you first heard you got traded to Vancouver? I was shocked a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, because I had I had no idea that Vancouver was interested. I had no idea that DC was even trying to get rid of me. Um, so it was certainly a shock when I went into that meeting, and, and or, or, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, as the hours and hours kind of went on, and you kept thinking about it, have conversations with, you know, these two guys here, and um, you talk to to it all, you talk through it all a bit more. Uh, with the family and everything, and then the more, the longer it went on, the more I got excited um, to come out to a club that really values me and, and to, to be on this adventure with my family about a new city that we really don't know anything about. Um, so it was, at first it was a shock, but now it's it's really turned into excitement. And Benny, your first impressions of Julian in the first day of training? Well, you know, today he, he was a kind of a recovery day, so his first, I would say, real big training with us will be tomorrow. So we need to know that, uh, <clears throat> you know, as, uh, as everyone who comes, he, he will need, a, I would say, a kind of uh, adaptation. It's a new system. It's a new way of playing. But uh, in, my, uh, in my experience, uh, when you, if you focus on the tactics and the, and the player is receptive, is you don't need two months to learn a, a new thing. Yeah, it's a, after two, three training sessions, you are... You are uh, uh, you're up to speed. We actually we tried to have a head start. We prepared a video for him. So uh, I hope he watched it. We sent it to him. <laughs> uh, so uh, about our principle, how does it mean? What are the the positional requirements for a wing back to play in our system? So yeah, I think that uh, it's not like uh, when we signed. Uh, uh, I don't know, Andres, when we signed Luis, there are players that were out of condition. Uh, Julian played, uh, okay, he missed last game because he had a, a little problem, but he was in, in, the, in, the, in the rhythm of the season, so he will be, I would say, fighting for a spot in the starting 11 from, from tomorrow to try to, to be in the squad for, uh, for Chicago. Yeah, thank you. Julian, further to Joshua's uh, question to you in regards to being here, you seem to be a guy who's very aware of everything going on, not just on the pitch, but what's going on in the world. <coughs> I'm wondering at this stage in your career, when you look at the big picture, how you want the rest of your career to go, how much does it factor in what Axel said, how much this franchise does in the community, and how much that means to you when it comes time to making a decision, whether or not you want to sign for the five-year contract that Axel said put your way. Because I think when you're at this stage in your life, I think that has to factor in. could be wrong. No, absolutely it does. And it, 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 for us, or I'm speaking for my wife and I here, um, for us it was as soon as I'd been given this opportunity in, in Atlanta where I'd come in as a rookie, I'd you know, work my way into the starting 11, into a regular starter, into 
um, a fan favorite, I want to say, with the Gresselmania and, and everything that. Um, I, I knew that I wanted to use that. Um, and that wasn't just something that now in my career I all of a sudden want to do. I think, you know, we did a charity golf tournament in Atlanta. We did a bunch of other work in, in D.C. Um, and I want to continue to doing those types of things. And um, it's certainly a big part. I think you can better the world if you change one person's life. I think that makes a big impact. And, you know, that's how you go about it. And you do the next one, then you do the next one. And uh, that's just the kind of person that I am, uh, the kind of person that my wife is. And, and I'm, again, ha so thankful for her support. And I'm super, yeah, happy to be part of a club that, that values that as well, you know, and that, that does a lot of work that, that way and, and has those, those core principles um, that, that kind of seem to align with me, um, you know. So I'm, I'm excited to get to work on that. And, um, again, just everything seems to... To kind of fit right here, yeah. Back online to Joshua. Everyone. Before I ask the online question, do you watch wrestling from WrestleMania? No, no. absolutely. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a question from online. Uh, Joshua Griffiths is asking, "What do you do off the pitch? What do you like to do off the pitch?" Yeah, so we are outdoor people. Uh, I like to hang out with my, with my wife, with my family. Um, we go on walks a lot, and you know, have a dog as well, so he gets to to run around and. Um, my wife had actually, this is funny because she had actually mentioned two months ago, she's like, I want to I wanna take up hiking more. I was like, oh, well, now yesterday I said to her, this is like the perfect, perfect spot for that. Um, so, yeah, we're, you know, I'm, I'm a big sports guy in general. I like all types of sports. I, I like to play golf. Um, I, I enjoy being outdoors, like I said, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah. I'm honestly, I'm open to anything, to be honest with you. I'm excited for, for what the city has to offer, um, what will be fun for us, yeah. When you got the news, did you Google Vancouver and like look at the top 10 things to do? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, so much happened in that two or three hours after I got told, I don't even remember. <laughs> I think my wife probably Googled a lot more than what I did. I don't think I even had time to Google stuff because, you know, it was just, you just try and make lists of what you need to do and, and you know, and, and all those types of things. And um, maybe I'll get to that at some point and I'll, I can revisit it when I have more like mindful time yeah. to it. Um, but I'm obviously open to suggestions from any fans that, that they have. What's your handicap? I'm not going to say. What's your okay. career, what's your career low? <laughs> what's your career low in the golf course? 67. Oh, okay, that's good. Mm. I don't want to do Was right. it a part of three though? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, my, no, my handicap, I think, is around zero, so it's pretty good. That's really good. We're going hard. Uh, you had 24 in Atlanta, 31 in D.C. Why 19? And did you approach either Whitecaps to try and get those numbers here? I didn't approach um, any of the players to ask for 24 or a 31. Um, well, I'm 19 years old. That's why I'm wearing 19. <laughs> Uh, no, 19 was available. I was in between 21 and 19. And, um, 21 has my podcast colleague, Fabian Herbert, so I was like, I can't steal that from him. 19 also aligned nicely because it, the 19th letter in the alphabet is S, um, and that Sophie is my daughter's name. Um, so in that sense, it was a little bit of, uh, okay, you know, this kind of uh, it has a little bit of meaning to it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the reason. Beautiful. Any final questions, Bruce? Yeah, you, you mentioned being involved in the community and, and that. And what other charities are would, are you possibly possibly looking at? And the club does, or what were you involved in the past in DC and Atlanta? I, I honestly haven't had a chance to, to look at what the what the club does, and, and that might have to you know be tabled a little bit, maybe until next year, until we kind of move here and yeah. until we settle in and you know do my part on the field. Um, but uh, we've done charity work where we've built a soccer pitch. We've helped build a soccer pitch in Atlanta um, in underserved communities. Uh, that's what we raised, I think, around $100,000 for in terms of the golf tournament there. In, uh, and then what I've, uh, a, a cause that is dear to me is, is childhood cancer and because I connected with a little kid in, um, in Atlanta um, hugely where they invited us to go trick-or-treating with them and, and had a really, really big connection with him. And, uh, unfortunately, he passed away about a year ago, um, and uh, we're still in touch with that family, and, and they were actually going to come out to D.C. Now they're going to come see us in Nashville when we play there a couple of weeks. So, um, But, yeah, it, it's that type of causes in terms of childhood, in terms of improving, improving lives um, to underserved communities, you know, people that aren't as lucky as I am, um, and, and that type of work 
is, is certainly something, some of my focus.